Hey, good morning, and for all my Filipino brethren, magandang umaga. Uh, this is chapel for today. I think this is our fifth installment, so I um, hope that you are doing well this morning, or if you are in the Philippines or overseas, it might be nighttime for you, and you might be tuning in with your family, so I hope that you are doing well. And today, Richard's going to lead us in chapel, and we've got Wendy here. Wendy is going to lead us in a song. Uh, Revelation song if you know it if you don't know it you can google that real quick and get the um, lyrics if you want to tune in with her but I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer and then we'll get started so if you would just bow your heads with me where you're at dear Lord we just come before you this morning um, excited about um, hearing your word and Lord uh, we just pray a special prayer over Richard as he opens up to Genesis chapter 3 and looks at what you have for us today God, that um, we would hear it. God, that our we wouldn't be hoping that, that your word would tickle our ears, Lord, but that, that, that it would challenge us. Lord, we, we pray that, that we would be appliers of the word, that, Lord, as we, we hear it, as we, um, as we absorb it, Lord, that, that your Holy Spirit would work in us so that um, we can understand it fully. Lord, we, um, we just pray for everyone as they are at home, as they're all over the world, um, all of our seafarer friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, that, that you would keep them safe and healthy. But, Lord, as, as it is Holy Week, Lord, that, that you would keep yourself at the forefront of their mind. That, Lord, as um, Easter is coming, as Sunday is coming, as the day that we celebrate as our, our hope, um, our ultimate hope, Lord, that, um, that it would just be constantly in our minds. Lord, um, and that we use this time, even though it's a scary time, Lord, even though it's a time of um, unknown, Lord, and it's something we've never faced, that God, through this, that, that we would feel your presence, God, that we would just come to know you in a deeper and more full way. In your name I pray, amen. All right, thank you, Wendy, for coming and sharing the song with us. All right, everybody sing along with me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the With all creation I sing 
Jesus, your name is power, breath of living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Oh, with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Amen. Wendy, I got to thank you. Thank you so much. You definitely set the tone. And uh, we serve an awesome God, don't we? We truly do. He loves us. And if you were with me last Sunday, I hope I, I, I hit home on that fact. That, that God in his, his un, undefining, uncomprehensible love um, throughout time and history uh, was reminding us and sent his Savior in his perfect time to redeem us of our sins. Prophecy is throughout the scriptures saying just that. And did you know that prophecy, that very first prophecy, is found right after Adam and Eve sinned? Right after they, they separated or, or distanced themselves from God in disobeying what he had asked them not to do? In Genesis 3, Genesis 3 Verses 14 and 15, we find this. Again, this is right after Adam and Eve uh, were basically caught, caught in the act of, of, of disobedience. And God is uh, talking to them. He's talking to the serpent, Satan, to let him know that this is not good, but he's got a plan. He says this to Satan. He says in Genesis 3, 14 and 15, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The first prophecy immediately thereafter with, with uh, what Adam and Eve did. And... Last time when I was talking to y'all, I shared, uh, and I hope again I got across, the God-man. And what basically his determination, and even though uh, he's God, there was a part of something inside of him, I'm sure, that was, that basically was filled with, with some type of anxiety or just knowing what he had to do. But again, through God's strength and God's power it, within himself, he accomplished the task. He had determination. He had the focus. He stayed to the plan. And when God gave that first prophecy, what I'd like to do today is help you or make you think, reflect on what was going through Satan's mind at this time. Again, now God just told him, You're gonna, you, he the Savior will crush your head. You the serpent will bruise his heel. Satan, all you're going to do is be nipping at his heels. All you're going to be doing is what appears to be throwing obstacles in his way. But when it comes down to the final, that final blow, come Passover, when Jesus dies on the cross, he is going to crush your head. Can you imagine what must have been going through Satan's mind at that time? And you've got to understand, he's a created being. He's far, far, far more smarter than you or I. Obviously, he can, he's watching everything going on, and he knows his, his end is, is, is near. He just doesn't know when. He doesn't know when it's all going to happen. 
And what I want you to, to think about today and reflect on is look at some various different events and time in history and, and ask yourself, what was Satan thinking at that time? For example, he knows a Savior's coming. He knows this individual, this Messiah, this individual is going to crush his head. Who is it? Do you know the story of Cain and Abel? When those first children were born after the sin, I wonder what Satan was thinking. I wonder if he was saying, is it that one? Is that the Savior over there? And we know the story, right? Cain killed Abel. Obviously, if Satan is watching, and again, I don't want to give Satan all the credit, because we in our own sinful nature, we, we have a lot that we can point fingers at and how we wrong God, etc. But was there a manipulation going on? And he saw something in Abel that emulated a savior. Again, something to stop and think, something to, to, to see where Satan's coming from here. Going on into history, what about Noah and the flood? You read about the Nithium, those individuals that basically, supposedly corrupted mankind. So much so, it was so corrupted that God had to literally take a, a one family and save them from all, all of uh, the destruction on the earth. What role did, did Satan play in that? As he's looking for the Savior, as he's looking for the Messiah, as he's watching individuals, generation upon generation, grow up, and he's asking himself, is that the guy? Is that the one? And how he's trying to thwart God's plan. What about the Tower of Babel? God basically told them all to do what? Just go across the plains of all of all of Earth. And yet, that guy named Nimrod, who built this tower that went up into the stars and introduced mankind first to worshiping the stars. Again, trying not to allow mankind to go and do what God has, has ordered them to do to try to prevent the Messiah from coming. It's, it's throughout the word of God. Then there's the nation of Israel. Again, man has messed up so much that God pretty much says, I'm going to create from you, Abraham, a spokesperson, a nation that will represent me and speak for me. And can you imagine what, what, what's going on in Satan's mind? Oh, I don't have, it's narrowed down now. The plan is coming together. It's going to be this, it's the Savior, the Messiah, that guy who's going to crush me on the head, he's coming out of that people group. And now I'm sure he's focusing a lot of energy and attention in that area as well. And then we're introduced to the 12 tribes. The Davidic, it's coming from David's line. And as, as it's narrowing and narrowing, and as Satan is beginning to see more and more who this individual, who this Messiah, the Savior, who this, this, this head crusher is coming from. Again, you can only imagine and think what's going on in as as Satan continues to scheme and manipulate and contr control whatever he can. Then, the angels are singing hallelujah at the birth of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the Savior. What happened in Bethlehem? All of the babies, two years and under, murdered. As, as Satan, and you know, mankind as well, is trying to prevent this 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 ultimate gift from happening. Reading on even more. The temptation of Christ. He now knows who that person is. And now he's going to try to just use his smart scheming to persuade Jesus not to do what he's supposed to do. And instead, let it come under my rule and reign. Together we'll rule. Together we'll, we'll look out. It can be yours if you want it. Praise God. Jesus stayed to the plan. Praise God he knew what he had to do and did not let this guy persuade him any other way. And now we're in Jerusalem. And I can only imagine that Satan is thinking, I want this guy dead. And does he fully comprehend what all of that death actually means and what it's going to accomplish? He stirred up the Pharisees. He stirred up the Jewish community. And here he is. Something to think about. Something to reflect upon. And I guess what you can get upon this is that sometimes we, we, we have a tendency to react in fear. 
or react in our own selfish um, temptations or influence. Again, we don't need to give Satan all the credit for our own actions. But he is trying continuously to prevent you and I as believers to not be believers, to ruin our testimonies, to not be glorious, and like Jesus in a time here when the difficulties are at hand, when he's about to approach, approach his death. Satan is smart, but God is far smarter. And we need to realize that Satan is a created being, just like you and I, and he may think, even though he, he knows the end of the story that, uh, that Jesus is going to come a second time, I, I believe in his heart and mind he thinks he can still change all of that. That's who Satan is. But again, do not let him get the best of you, especially now, as there's so much, again, uncertainties out there. God allows Satan to exist. God allows disease to exist. But again, if, you, if you're walking with God and recognizing and realizing he's got it all, he's sovereign, he's going to use every aspect of yours and my life for his glory and honor. So may I encourage you today, as we are approaching the, 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 the uh, end of, of the, the week with, with Easter Sunday coming, God proved it once. He's going to prove it again over and over and over again, that he is sovereign and he is in control. Nothing, nothing will thwart or change his plan for you and I. May we keep our eyes on him and continue to be a shining light to a world that in many ways does, does, uh, does show fear or uncertainty. May we, through Christ, his strength and his strength alone, he is our example, to be a stabilizing force to a lost and dying world. And tell them the story of Jesus. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for listening near and far, morning and evening, wherever you are. May the hand of God continually remind you he's got this. Let me pray for you. Precious Lord, I lift up our listening community to you. I lift up all our seafarers, all our family and friends. Lord, continually remind them of your love. Continually remind them of how much you do have this. And we have nothing to fear but to only move forward in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless each and every one of you. Have a good day.